So, before I went on my little vacation, I unboxed the Strix 27. Every video I've seen demonstrating the performance comparisons have been comparing it to the GTX 1080. Well, I want to see it compared to its actual predecessor, the GTX 1070. Well, now that I'm back, I put all that data together for you, so let's get to it. Hey there. From the moment they announced the RTX 2070, I've been curious about the generation over generation improvement of the 70 level of NVIDIA GPUs. So I've run benchmarks on both the newest card and the previous generations of 70 cards, and I've put those numbers together for you. Uh, I've run tests on the new 2070, the 1070, and the GTX 970, which is still a very respectable gaming GPU. I even ran tests using a 1070 Ti, a, a 1070 SLI setup, and just to see, I was able to borrow a 1080 Ti for the Win 3, which I ran the same tests on so that we can compare the last generation's biggest, baddest consumer grade enthusiast graphics option to the new entry level enthusiast card. I ran tests at the ideal settings for the lowest end card on the list so as to see what the scaling from generation to generation has actually been and not to give the newer cards any undue advantage. I think uh, that's enough exposition and you are most likely just interested in those results uh, so we'll start with the canned benchmarks where we can see an overall improvement of 25% over the 1070 and 52% uh, over the 970. Uh, so here are the results from Heaven on Extreme setting, Valley on Extreme HD, Superposition on 1080p Extreme, Fire Strike, and Time Spot. For games, I ran Shadow of Mordor, uh, Metro Last Light Redux, Ghost Recon Wildlands, and Far Cry 5, also at the ideal settings for the 970 to see how far we've come in gaming at the 70 level of cards. Uh, here the results were, as expected, slightly more erratic, uh, but we see an average improvement of 15% over the 1070 and 49% over the 970. I will note that for some reason the SLI 1070s weren't working properly on Far Cry 5. Uh, so those results have been omitted. After all of my testing, I recorded an overall average improvement of 20% over the GTX 1070. 
and a whopping 51% over the GTX 9s. On average, I found the 1080 Ti still reaching 15% over the 2070, but with the dwindling supply of 1080 Ti's, that may not be an option for most builders. Overall, the 1070 at $500 to $550 is appropriately positioned. Is it worth spending the extra $100 to $150 for a Zotac Amp Extreme or even the Strix? Probably not. I am looking forward to seeing how these RTX cards perform as games, including the RTX and DLSS options, release, along with drivers maturing to match them. I'll put the test rig specs in the description below, uh, along with links to the 2070 Strix, so you can check out the card for yourselves. Thanks for watching. Go ahead and click that subscribe button and notification bell to be kept up on new content. If you like this video, give it a like. If you didn't, well, I guess you just don't understand the point of these videos. As always, I'm Meat Popsicle from the Prodigal PC, and I shall speak to you when I return.